Joining us now, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government, John Malcolm. Sir, thanks for coming on. Why do you think Pelosi is doing this? I think she's going to try to control the Senate process as much as she can. So even though House Republicans uh, were certainly deprived of the opportunity to call the witnesses that they want, so a lot of people see this, that what happened in the House is a rigged system, she mm. wants to make sure that the same rigged system is going to take place in the Senate. The Constitution gives the House the sole power uh, to impeach, and it gives the Senate the sole power to try impeachment but she's trying to control the process as much as she can. I think it'd be very difficult for them to explain that vote to most of their constituents. Look, uh, you can not like the way things have handled, but have been handled, but the question is, do you think it reaches the level of impeachment, and do you think he should be convicted? And I think that's the question that Senator Collins and Mitt Romney, who may not like some of the way, the, the way that the president has handled the situation, they may not like it, but can they go to the level of impeachment? Uh, I don't think you're going to get there. I think it is just absurd to try to compare this impeachment to uh, Richard Nixon's or Bill Clinton's. Richard Nixon covered up felony violations of the law by his subordinates, actual burglaries. Uh, Bill Clinton uh, committed felonies by uh, lying under oath. He committed perjury. You'll note that in this uh, impeachment, uh, there's no allegation of any violation of any law by the president. Uh, and the abuse of power claim is really based on democratic criticism of yep. how he handled diplomatic relations with Ukraine. I think this is part of the reason why you're seeing so much success um, from conservative news organizations like the Daily Signal where I look, where, where I work. And I think it's you know, the, the fractured state of the media gets a lot of criticism these days. But when the mainstream media refuses to actually report on the good news coming from the Trump administration, the policies that are affecting Americans back home, that really shows the need for these smaller news organizations to come forward. Of course, Fox News is covering, but most other uh, mm. new, major news networks, if you flip the channel around, you're only hearing about impeachment and investigations. This is a common sense decision because what the judge said is, uh, Wisconsin, you have to take registered voters off the list because you've gotten official records from the U.S. Postal Service saying they've moved out of state or Wisconsin has gotten uh, information from other states saying, oh, this former Wisconsin resident is now registered in our state. So basically they're taking people who are, aren't eligible to vote anymore off the voter rolls. It's entirely appropriate uh, for people to want to uh, rat out people who do bad things in the government, who want to tell about bad things that are happening. But it's entirely on them to follow the protected disclosure path. And if they step off that path, unless and until Congress changes that path, they have their fate in their own hands. Well, I think that uh, Boris Johnson certainly has a huge mandate from the British people, uh, 80-seat majority. But I think he's going to govern as a, a conservative uh, prime minister. Uh, he has a huge mandate from conservative supporters across the country. He's won over a large number of pro-Brexit Labour uh, Party uh, voters who simply want to see uh, Brexit uh, delivered. And I think that uh, Boris Johnson will deliver Brexit, but also he is going to implement a new immigration points-based uh, system. He's going to uh, uh, introduce reforms to the criminal justice system to ensure that terrorists are not freed from, uh, from prison. Uh, but also at the same time, I think he's going to invest strongly in, in public services. Uh, in part, uh, I think he's going to do so uh, by, through economic uh, growth. And I think the Brexit actually will be uh, tremendous for Britain's economy. And you've seen a soaring stock market today, the pound rising as well. There's a great deal of economic confidence now with a, a big conservative majority. Well, the path is actually very clear uh, for Boris Johnson. For the first time since the Brexit vote in June of 2016, we actually have some clarity and we have a pathway on what's going to happen. Uh, Boris Johnson already has a deal agreed with the European Union. Every candidate that stood in the election under the Conservative Party banner had to make a pledge that they would support that deal. And he now has a majority of 80 in the House of Commons, so he doesn't have to rely on smaller parties, smaller regional parties. So he's made a pledge that he will uh, bring the withdrawal bill, as it's called, 
to the floor of the House of Commons before Christmas, mm -hmm. and the UK will be out by out of the European Union by January 30th. British uh, voters really, in this case, embraced conservative ideology. They embraced free markets, limited government. Uh, they embraced also a strong national defence, a strong uh, British foreign policy, but above all, they embraced uh, Brexit, uh, the ideals of sovereignty and self-determination that British voters had already uh, endorsed back in t the 2016 referendum, and they wanted Brexit uh, delivered. This confrontation between the United States and China is far from over. On the plus side, the president has gotten the Chinese attention. I think that's remarkable. Um, we're going to see $100 billion in, in new business. That's... that's uh, um, good. And I think most importantly, companies are starting to rethink doing business with China and doing business in China. So we've seen diversification of supply chains and people thinking uh, different risk assessments about it. So all that's to the positive. On the other hand, it's not a, it's not a cost-free trade deal. We had we had to pay for tariffs. Uh, we had to bail out farmers. And it's I don't think it's a sustainable strategy over time. It's and, and we haven't addressed the big issues like IP theft. So it's the, the yeah. first battle in a wrong running thing. But I think in the short term, it's good news for the administration. Well